Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. And today's video, we're going to be doing a recreation of a potential mission that we could see in the future, which is a collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency, in which uh, they will attempt to possibly, hopefully, maybe by the year 2031, I believe is the timeline, uh, do a uh, sample recovery of uh, Perseverance. Like Perseverance is going to like get samples off Mars and like like put them down. And then the, the ESA crap could come and pick it up and bring it back to Earth. It'd be a super cool, epic mission. It'd be amazing. And we are now currently beginning the construction phase of our, our lander, our Mars lander. So the way it works, this two launches. The first launch is a Mars lander that goes out to Mars. It will land on Mars. Um, it will then deploy a rover, which will go collect the samples. It will go back... Um, transfer the sample to a, a rocket which i'm currently building right now which will launch from the surface of mars and then meet up with an orbiter <clears throat> orbiter satellite thingy which is the second launch um, which is in waiting in, a, in a, a mars orbit it will deposit the sample into there and then the orbiter will then deploy a return capsule which will then fly back to earth and return this ca the sample it'll be amazing big epic right so there there is our um here is our, our mars launch vehicle thingy um, which you're currently there good right now. It actually perfectly fits in our little lander thing, which actually kind of can kind of convenient there. It looked, looked perfect. So um, <clears throat> we're gonna be putting a uh, putting a little roof on, and it's gonna do like a cool deploy mechanism where it's gonna like you know move up, and there's gonna be big robotic stuff, and there's gonna be hatches. So it's gonna be big, epic. It's gonna be awesome, much wow. And that is um, and that's gonna be that. And they're also gonna be building a little rover. The rover is kind of janky because the the, the smallest wheels. Uh, and KSP are, are still pretty big for like a like a micro rover. I mean, sure, there's ways to do it that are a little better, but um, like to do like like you can do things where you have like propellers, um, and then you do like grip pads as the wheel. It's really complicated. Some people like Gameplay Review UK and Space Lab know how to do that stuff, but um, I'm not that talented. You know, I'm I'm me. I am. I don't know. Maybe that's. I don't know. <laughs> that's actually in this lander. This is the first time I've ever used that like ESA probe core thing. It actually kind of looks like the renders. Of, of the thing. We, 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 we know very little about this mission. I actually really like doing these type of missions, like these concept, not really concept missions, but like future missions that we really don't know anything about. It provides a lot of room for like creative freedom, like Neutron. I can kind of do what I wanted. I can, you know, I could, and, and if <laughs> there's not going to be a bunch of people in the comment section being like, oh, you did this wrong because I mean, I do everything wrong. You know, it's my specialty screwing stuff up. So, <laughs> um, you know, I can say, hey, we don't know. So, you know, there's my comeback. You know, if you do though, if you do think I have the best missions ever, best recreation, go drop the subscribe button. Oh my gosh, plugs, subscribe, join, member, Patreon, comment, like, yes, much wow. Discord, I have a Discord. Now, there was a whole meltdown on my Discord today. Hey, it was like our fir first drama, so exciting. Another career milestone, right? I don't know, I may talk about that a little more in the video if I want, because it's kind of hilarious. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, constructing the rover, it kind of looks weird with the big advanced grabbing unit on top. I could have just done docking ports, but it's always a pain to mess around with docking ports. It's advanced grabbing units are easier, in my opinion, when you're trying to dock two vessels that are on the ground together. It's just much easier. So, there you go, go ahead and chuck the heat shield on. Um, we, we, we really don't know anything about, um, what the, what this landing vehicle is going to be like. So, um, I just did something similar, um, to how, to how the, the American or NASA Mars rovers, where you just, you tend to send the heat shield, um, deploy the, the fairing and stuff. You have a, you have a, a parachute and then you'll, you land possibly the last few, um, the, the last few little bit of the burn. Oh my gosh, guys, it looks like when AFK on, it looks like I'm back. So, I was going to go and check the heat shield on now and, uh, and do that. So, Timeline for this mission, um, they are going to hope it's by 2031. Um, they There was recently a contract awarded to Northrop Grumman um, to build the, the launch vehicle out of from Mars to orbit. That's really, the, I think, the only uh, firm contract we have right now. Um, so we, we, we really don't know what this is going to be like. Personally, I'm I'm on the more I'm on the more pessimistic end for this mission. I do not have high hopes for it like like happening. Like I, I think Starship is going to be on on Mars way before these guys get anywhere close. Um, because you know it's NASA and the ESA. They're not really known for no offense, but they're not really known for being fast. Um, I I, I think it'll it'll get lost to this mission will get lost to like bureaucracy or like it'll it'll be over budget. It'll take forever. It'll yeah, so I don't have high hopes. I don't know. Maybe I'm too pe pessimistic, but you know, we'll see what happens. You know, you never know. You never know. So, um, we're doing we're in the build timelines right now. Obviously, we're building the rock right now. My guess is they're gonna launch this on an Ariane six. 
Um, so I'm making an Ariane 6. It's not a great Ariane 6 recreation, but I don't know. This isn't this video about the mission, not the rocket, you know? So, Ariane 6, if you don't know, is the new European launch vehicle that I think is supposed to be built soon, maybe. Um, so, uh, I, it's, it's still gonna be a few years out, but, um, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it exists because it's kind of a kind of cool idea. You know, it's nice to see you're building more rockets and stuff. They have Vega and Ariane Five right now, which I mean, yeah, they're okay. But you know, it'd be cool to see something something more. in the Ariane Six is, to be honest, kind of another generic rocket. But oh well. Um, we're now approaching the end of our build time lapse, and in the next few seconds here, and we can get ready to crossfade over to our launch number one. So this is the Ariane Six, which is going to be sending the lander, the rover, and the the uh, launch. I don't know what to call it. The Mars, the Mars rocket, the Mars rocket, um, to to the surface of Duna. So uh, going to be throttling up the engines and SRVs, and there go the launch clamps, and we are now in the air. We're ready to get the time lapse going. And up, up, and away. This we only do the one build time lapse for, for only the first launch, uh, because being a build time lapse for the, the the orbiter thing wouldn't have been that amazing. Because the rover, the orbiter is like a big, it's a big hexagon, and I love hexagons. They're my they're my favorite shape, um, but it's just a hexagon. <laughs> Um, so they're gonna do our launch, gonna get ready for SRB separation here in the next few seconds, and there they go, cut, and separation. Nice clean separation there, now we're just on the power of our core stage, as we can continue to pitch our way over. And that's gonna be depleted the next few seconds, and we can power up our upper stage, which is gonna do our orbital insertion, and is going to also do our, uh, doing a transfer burn. And then the, uh, we're actually gonna use aerodynamic entry to, actually no, we do circularize ourselves, I forgot, because we need to land accurately, um, by Perseverance, by my pers Perseverance rover, which actually landed a few videos, uh, it was a few, actually almost, it was a few weeks ago, it was a while, actually. Um, on the surface of, of Duna, on my recreating every Mars 2021 mission, go check out the video, right? Oh, my gosh. Um, so yeah, just, uh, have the round, I don't have a throttle all the way up, I'm just throttling to maintain around 2Gs. Don't worry about anything over 2Gs, because, you know, you want to keep the realism, you know? We want to, but it's brilliant, we can roll, pretend the payload doesn't want to be overstressed or anything, so. Um, <laughs> rhinos are really quiet when they're not at full thrust, it's kind of wonky. But, uh, getting ready to do our Duna transfer burn right now. We've got a transfer set up, we're at a transfer window, um, which is nice and good stuff. And then we can get ready to, um, get ready to do our burn, I don't know, should we do pilot podcast time? I <laughs> I don't know, because we're doing the Duna transfer, nothing's really, nothing super, we're just going to do correction burns now for the next, and then an orbital insertion, and then a land, landing, basically. I'll talk about the landing, the landing's actually pretty interesting, because it's, I really like doing those, like, the, the rover landings, where you, like, come in, parachute, then you have to, like, deploy everything, and then you're landing propulsively, and it's all fun, it's fun, especially sky crane, this thing isn't a sky crane, but it's still pretty fun to do, so, um, I should do pilot podcasts, I know, Discord server has some drama today, oh my gosh, guys, right? Um, so much drama. Can't believe it. First jump. It's, it's a, an accomplishment, right? It's an accomplishment. Um, I, I had, I don't know. My Discord is fun. It's, I'm re I really like my Discord. Huge fan of it. Um, I'm, I do like everyone on Discord. You guys are great. You know, you can join the Discord and plug, right? Um, but I'm not like, it's not like super serious drama. It's just mods on Discord, man. <laughs> they're, they're a tricky business. Like I swear, 80% of the problems on the Discord server have been because of mods. Like, I swear, why why is it so difficult? <laughs> why are moderators so difficult? Either way, I don't know. Point is, we're landing on Duna! Our very first landing, gonna start our re-entry. It's kind of where the fairing kind of widens a little bit, but the thing didn't fit perfectly in 3.75 meter fairing. It does look kind of weird like that, but either way, we are going to start our Duna entry as we get ready to target the rover. We actually land like 10 kilometers away, so, <laughs> so much for that accurate landing. Um, so there we go, down below 20 kilometers now, and we're going to start a slow down procedure, because you can actually slow down quite well on doing it if you have a lot of surface area to hit the atmosphere with. And there goes the parachute, which is deployed. We can get ready to stage away the parachute. I do that at one kilometer, and then we can, uh, get ready to, uh, well, we'll, we'll light up our landing engine, and then bring the rover, or the rover, lander, and Mars rocket in for a, in for a landing. So, there it goes. Fairing is gone, heat shield is gone. Landing legs are down and throttling up those two twitch engines that have on our lander, like so. Coming in just for a nice soft landing on the surface of Duners. Coming in now, got to get a nice perfect buttery landing and oh, oh, how amazing is it going to be? And it's all right, so uh, it, it's down. I'm gonna shut down the landing engines, and then we can uh, get ready to deploy our rover, which is gonna go find the the Percy Perseverance rover. 
Um, the real way the mission would work in real life, uh, the per per Percy would um, would pick up the samples and then it would deploy the samples and put them down in tubes um, on the ground of Mars, just like leave them there and they would go drive away. And there it goes, very great, very Kerbal deployment mechanism. And this thing is like sick drifts to the max. Like, I don't know why. I turned up traction control, it is just, it drifts around like crazy. Like, look at it go. Um, so for that reason, I'm not really wanting to drive that thing 10 kilometers. So since Perseverance is also a rover, it will persevere and Drive 10 kilometers, great puns, um, and drive up. So the real way, um, the two rovers, Percy and um, the, the ESA rover won't act, I think it's the ESA rover, won't actually dock or anything, or like, they won't They won't physically transfer to each other, like Percy drop it and the rover pick it up, but um, just for fun, I decided to, to bring them together, just to add a little bit of interesting stuff to this one. So you can just pretend like the rover picked up the sample and was going back, but I kind of wanted to show off my really garbage perseverance I'm only realizing now how just garbage it was. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, and here we go, just gonna boop, bup, boop, it's a butt boop um, <laughs> of the uh, of the rover. And there we go, we're gonna pretend like they transferred a sample and now they're just gonna head back. This this rover, it is, it is like, like I said, it, it, it loved to drift. Um, it doesn't love to drift going backwards, so I don't know what the deal is. Kerbal is weird, it's probably me being dumb not knowing something, but either we're just gonna beep 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 all the way up to the lander and then gonna tra transfer the, the, the sample that we are like pretend, <laughs> like hot potatoing around. Um, I guess it's not really hot potato, but you know, it, uh, analogies, metaphors, um, metaphors, bad metaphors. So we do have to actually turn around the front direction just so we can actually um, put it in because that's where the uh, the grabbing unit is. And this goes on for some while, but eventually it comes together with the lander and there it goes. I did have to retract the landing gear of the landing legs of the lander because I, I'm gonna deploy them here for just a second. And uh, yeah, you can, it, that problem's pretty obvious. Um, so it is now transferring the sample, and we are going to actually get ready to crossfade over to launch number two, which is an, I am going to do an Ariane 5, this is my garbage Ariane 5 recreation, it's not great, there's a stock Ariane 5, but my payload was too big for the stock one, so I had to make a big Ariane 5, not a good Ariane 5, but here we go, we're going up, so this is launch number two, this is the orbiter that we're going to be launching, um, to the surface, of, or not to the surface, to uh, Dune Orbit, uh, I do not know exactly how this is working, um, how this mission will work. I, I've, I've heard it two ways. So either um, both the lander and the orbiter are going to launch in the same transfer window to Mars, and then they'll come back on the same one back to Earth. Or I've also heard it that the orbiter will launch uh, on a second transfer window, so it'll take literally, it'll be six years to do the entire mission. Um, so I don't know, the reason, the reason they would launch in separate transfer window is why would you spend all that money um, launching an Ariane 5? Because they're not, they're not a cheap rocket to launch. Uh, if, if like something goes wrong during the, the, uh, the, the gathering of the sample or something, or the landing doesn't go right on Mars, so why would you, why would you risk an entire Ariane 5? It's a lot, a lot millions of dollars, right? Um, so, um, I don't know, I, I think they are doing two, I'm not sure, because I, I heard 2026 as the first launch date. Um, and then 2031 as the return, which would be four years, actually. So that would be two transfer windows. And hey, look, we're gonna crossfade back to Duna, because I don't really want to, um, I didn't want to show that whole trans, the whole interplanetary thing, because that'd have been boring. So yeah, it'd have been six years on four, because that's two transfers, is four, I'm dumb. Anywho, we're gonna be deploying our return vehicle. There it is, big epicness as it deploys. And three, two, one, go, we. So yeah, this thing this thing is zooming off the off the, into the sky right away. So this is where the uh, this is a little rocket thing where the um, the the sample is. We're gonna throttle it down way low. I'm trying to keep it below like two or three g's of acceleration just just for efficiency's sake because you don't wanna, you, you don't want to be like blasting through the atmosphere that you you have a lot of a lot of a lot of drag losses and stuff. So this thing is actually does not have quite enough delta v to get into a perfectly stable orbit, so it will be get into an unstable orbit, also known as an orbit that intersects with the atmosphere. Um, so it, so, um, our, our orbiter is going to have to do, pull off a lot of the docking on its own, so, um, they're pretty close to each other, but the final docking is have to be done by our orbiter thingy as a target. The thing has loads of delta V, so it has absolutely no problem, um, just kind of messing around with its orbit a little bit. We have to do a little bit, we have to be a little bit expeditious in our docking because, um, we don't want to get to the point where we're starting to re-enter the atmosphere and our orbit will quickly deteriorate after that happens so here you go here's our big or yellow rectangle uh, hexagon i know shapes 
Um, and this one's also just gonna be on scrambling unit because I didn't want to put any sort of docking thing on on the on the rocket because I feel like that would have kind of killed my Delta V. But uh, there it goes. Gonna grab it now. We're going to cross fade over to the deployment of the return vehicle, which we are going to do another big opening of. And there it is, hanging out inside of the orbiter. And here is where a potential problem may appear. Let's see if you can spot the problem. Can you spot the problem? Can you spot the mistake? Do some investigative journalisming. Can you see as I rearrange my staging like a pro? And here we go. Epic. Gonna release it and oh yeah. Yeah, that 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 doesn't fit. So we're just gonna go ahead and um, do the good old time warp trick here, you'll see. And okay, you see no problem at all. And now we get ready to our return back to Kerbin. Uh, with our with our uh, return thing. The return thing has way too much delta V, but I, I really wanted to just make sure we had enough and it's hard to get not a ton of delta v and stuff that is that small because the fuel tanks like it's getting to the point where we're using the smallest fuel tanks like the what we use is not the smallest fuel tank but it, it's pretty close and i wanted to keep this thing small and ask you to just increase the length because it needed to fit in the it needed to fit in the, the orbiter so can you go and do our curb and entry and it's going to just we're going to stage away um, the, the main fuel transfer thing is going to be heat shield, a heat shield parachute and a probe core that I choose. I chose like the square probe core thing because that kind of looks like a sample container, kind of. So here we are. We have made it back to Kerbin. There goes the staging and here comes the re-entry, which somehow we did not melt. I'm so surprised because thing was all wobbly and the temperature gauge was going crazy. I mean, everything else melted, so it's no, no, no cheating, right? But uh, here we are coming into Kerbin through peak G's now and we are now on our way down to the surface parachute is deployed and this thing comes in super 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 slow because as you can imagine this thing does not weigh a lot and the parachute is pretty big so there it is and stage the heat shield and here you're coming in at like two meters a second down to the surface of Kerbin and and you can see how slow this thing falls like it is not it's, it's taking a sweet time to come down and touchdown hey welcome down i forgot to do a water review today guys oh rip oh well just love to do it next time um that's gonna begin to the end of today's video so we can put on screen a picture of all the members big thanks to you guys want to join become a member or patreon or all that awesome stuff your patreon will also get shown up there but uh yeah thank you for watching see you next time please leave a comment to the video once again thank you for watching we'll see you next time and bye Yeep.